Let me ask if you're happy with the numbers as they stand in the fourth quarter. Um, yes, hi Matt. Good morning. Uh, I mean, I don't want to correct you, but although I do, um, you know, we beat uh, expectations on the top line, and uh, we have been improving our profits. So yes, I am very pleased with the uh, results in the fourth quarter, but also for the year. Okay, uh, the the number that we were looking at here was for Q4 revenue uh, Q4 revenue increasing four percent to one point one two. Uh, I, th I think mm -hmm. the average estimate was for 1.11. That was the number we were going off. So uh, apologies if, <laughs> if, uh, if there's something you, you don't like about those numbers. Let me ask you a little bit about uh, what you're seeing in the German economy at the moment. Because, of course, the German economy, we've just had confirmation this morning, has narrowly avoided falling into a technical recession. I know there's much more to Billfinger than Germany, of course. But tell me about your experience in Germany. How much slower does it seem? Yeah, I mean, for us, Germany is our home base. We have the, um, you know, the majority of our people actually in Germany or in Germany, Austria, to be more exact. Uh, we're seeing stability uh, because when we look at our you know, key industries, oil and gas, energy and emissions, and uh, chem and petrochem, these are all robust industries. Uh, we've shown improvement year on year. And uh, you know, we have visibility through our order book, which has also climbed 12% in the year. So you know, we're quite confident in being able to maintain our growing top line and growing bottom line, also in Germany. You know, I, I have to look back here as well, Thomas, at the numbers that I have in front of me. It looks like your earnings before interest, uh, taxes, and amortization dropped 8% to $37 million. Um, and if, if I look at the net number, it looks like in the quarter you had a net loss of 10 million euros, which is bigger than the net loss you had in the same quarter a year ago of 6 million euros. Am I seeing these numbers wrong? No, you're seeing them uh, correctly, but uh, you know we, we try to focus on the uh, the adjusted EBITDA. But how is that an improvement? Uh, you you told you you were correcting me saying that you you've improved profit, whereas you, you've lost more money this year than you did last year, and most people wouldn't see that as an improvement. Yeah, I guess it uh, depends where you guide it. So we guide the uh, adjusted EBITDA margin. Uh, we said between fifty and seventy-five. We landed at sixty-five on the year. Uh, which is up on 3 million last year. So you know, we tend to focus on the year, maybe on the quarter on quarter, uh, you could take it apart. But if you do that further, then you'll see again that it's the adjustments that uh, cause the big difference. Uh, so uh, for us, you know, we're calling it a year of achievement. We're quite happy with the results and uh, we'll continue to do so going forward. You're, you're happy, Thomas. Is Sevian Capital, are they happy? What are the conversations like at the moment with your, uh, one of your big shareholders? What do they say about your strategy? Um, there, uh, I guess the right term will be pleased, but not yet satisfied. Uh, they see progress. And when we uh, unveiled the strategy in February of 2017, exactly two years ago, we said it would take a number of years. We said it would take a number of phases and many small steps. And we're actually progressing through those steps. We give ourselves a tick mark as we uh, check each uh, box going forward. So in that sense, yes, I can understand that they, um, you know, they came in at, a, let's say, a higher share price than where we are today. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, pleased but not yet satisfied would, I think, describe their mood.